guys, it's Hatch Romano. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I hope it's a really gloomy, rainy, wannabe, cosy kind of day today in London. So it's my day off. And sometimes I think I'm going to have a break from perfume today, but it never ends up happening because I am too damn curious for my own good. So I've been rooting around in my treasure trove of samples because I'm just about to gift somebody um, who's been very, very generous and kind to me recently a bunch of stuff. So I've just dug out lots of things, a whole selection of samples, and we're going to do a little sniffer palooza. I know some of you guys really like these videos. I hope that when I do them, I'm going to come across something that's going to blow my socks off because I haven't smelled these perfumes. At least I don't think I have. Some of them possibly once, but um, yeah. So I'm not going to go on too much. Let's just start smelling things because I think there's about 20. I will try and give the best description I can. Hopefully it brings to light some things for you to try. But for now, let's do it. First things first. So I'm literally just going to jump in. This first fragrance is by Teresa Helbig and it's called A Bulldog in the Atelier. Atelier, which I think is a really cool name. Let's see what it says here. A place where dreams and musings come to life under the watchful eye of Teresa's bulldog. Silent witness to the Atelier life. Doesn't say anything about the ingredients. I don't know if Teresa Helbig is a natural perfumer, but I'm going to smell it anyway. I'm going to reference my phone if I get a bit lost or feel like an idiot, which happens all the time. So, mmm. This smells a bit carnation like, but very light. It's a little bit like uh, one by Diana Vreeland that I smelled recently, which is actually in my Five Discoveries and Five Disappointments video. It's light, woody, airy. Uh, a bulldog in the Atelier. I don't know what that reference is, but... I like this. This is clean. There's something a little bit odd in there. There's something in there that smells like... Recently I smelled these fragrances by Neanderthal and they've got this weird, almost glue-like industrial smell. And I can smell a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of that in here, but mainly this is a really crisp, bright floral. <coughs> floral. And it smells like carnations. Clean, tiny bit spicy, possibly a little bit of rose. Let me see what's in there because I'm intrigued. So don't worry, I won't keep you waiting while I do this. Oh, of course, people are gonna start building things now. It's been quiet all day. Okay, so the notes are musk, coriander, sandalwood, nutmeg, um, geranium, patchouli, vanilla, pepper that looks like. So that's probably why I feel like it smells carnation-y because it's like a spicy floral. Woody too. I like this. This is a winning start, but we're going to move straight on. So the next one is by Laborio Olfativo. I'm guessing this is an Italian brand. This is called Deco Vert. So green Deco. What's, what does Deco mean? And it's one of those damn things. I have to put it on my skin. No, I'm going to run out of skin very, very quickly, but still. So Laborio Olfativo. Please be quiet. Oh, okay, this smells green. Let me put it somewhere else because it's clashing with something else that I had on my hand from way earlier today. Okay, hold on. Shimmering black background, mosses, woods, magnolia, lilac, jasmine. This feels a little bit spoiled. Eek, that's not good. This one smells, when you smell that, Fragrances that are slightly on the turn, they smell like burnt hairspray and celery and just weirdness. This one's going to go to that pile, which is going to be the dead pile. There's another one by this brand, and it's called Cozumel. The aromatic, passionate fragrance oscillates constantly between warmth and coolness. Wild, narcissistic, yada, yada, yada. Doesn't say what's in it either. Let's have a look. Oh, it does say, it says tobacco... Indian hemp and velvety wood. That sounds nice. I like tobacco. I like the smell of hemp in perfume. Oh, this one's this one's not off. This one smells great. It feels like uh, a little bit smoky wood. 
but it's not the tobacco because tobacco is quite smooth anyway. Tobacco can be chocolatey, it can be it can be woody too, uh, leafy, all of those things. My nose hairs are tickling my face. It smells a little bit like this fig in it, and I don't know why, but it's definitely got this kind of uh, sort of fatty, chewy greenness with a smoky woodiness. And it smells a bit dry. It smells like dried hemp sort of smell with, yeah, some kind of green fruitiness like fig. It's almost buttery, fatty, waxy, and then a smokiness, which I'm guessing is vetiver because vetiver can be very smoky. We're going to move on. So the next one is by Ex Nihilo Paris. I have tried one from this brand before. Anyway, I've tried a, one from this brand and I, it was something about morphine, I believe. I think it's called Sweet Morphine. It's a pink thing. But this one's called Brompton Immortals and it says, as a tribute to Harrods, Jordi Fernandez, who is the perfumer, took inspiration from the Egyptian legend of immortality to invent a mystical scent. I like the sound of this already. Saffron and pink pepper mingle and provoke an electric tension. Bulgarian rose, uh, Lise, Lise Yalang. This was in something I spoke about recently. Lise Yalang. Combination of Lily and Yalang Yalang. Molecule, maybe something like that. Um, da -da 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 -da. Vanilla, Madagascar, patchouli, oliban, which is frankincense, and white musk. So I like the sound of this. This sounds like it's going to be up my street if it's not too vanillary. Let us see. Oh, the waft I've just got. I really like this already. Let's see. Oh, this is my favourite so far. Easily. Why does this smell oody? This smells kind of Middle Eastern, but really sharp. This is really high pitched and sharp. It's, there's no depth or warmth to it. It feels like an oody rose, which sounds like a boring combination, but... This is done really nicely. I like the feel of this. I like the style. I like the way it's composed. It's almost a little bit masculine, like leaning towards masculine, like a masculine rose. And there's dryness. Saffron is a really unusual note. I can get it, I can feel it in this a, a little bit. It's not too much. But if you're into your oud roses, uh, this is a particularly woody oud rose. I know oud is a woody note, but set aside from the oudiness of this, this feels... Where's vanilla? I don't feel anything like vanilla. Maybe it comes out a bit later, but this is super sharp. Super woody, masculine, oody rose that doesn't feel too typical. So, I like that one. Winner. Okay. This one is a diptyque one. I remember getting this, actually. When I went into the diptyque shop randomly when I was vlogging one day, they just handed me a bunch of stuff, which was really kind. I don't know why they did, but they said, here you go, have some things. And I said, great, thanks, goodbye. So this one's called Le De Le. Le De Le. So this is water of water, water of the water. It's an eau de toilette. I don't know what the hell this is. It was put in with some stuff that I've been meaning to smell, like all of this. So let's smell it. Le de le. Is it going to be interesting? Is it going to be just a bunch of water? Who knows? Oh, this is really pretty. This feels like, um, almost like a, a lovely aquatic spring-like floral. I can't pinpoint what the floral is, though. I feel like it's a fantasy flower, something like lotus or freesia, maybe? This is elegant, light, one of those things that I think you would wear if you don't want your perfume to offend people, which is totally not what I do at all, but I know a lot of people don't like to smell strong or they have jobs that they can't wear strong fragrances. This is really nice. I really like this. Diptyque fragrances can be hit and miss for me. And this one I think is super inoffensive, elegant, light. What's the spice? I can feel a spice here. It feels maybe like there's Neroli as well. I'm gonna have to look this one up because I, I really like this, actually. I didn't even know this one um, existed. I didn't know they had a perfume called that. Oh, they've got one called Lure as well, and then they've got Lure de Lure. 
Okay, just confusing much. So this is one of the ones that comes in, it's not their regular oval shaped bottles, it's a, if you've ever been in one of their shops before, it's one of the taller ones. So what's in here? Ah, oh, cloves, so that's why I could smell, smell spice. Ginger, cinnamon, and then you have uh, orange blossom. So I just give myself a pat on the back. I said I felt like there was neroli in here or something, and a spice, orange blossom. Uh, lavender and geranium, tonka beans, patchouli, and there's pettigrain as well, so it's another note that comes from the orange tree. Lovely. The spices are very well placed. It's elegant, it's a little bit dainty and innocent. No, it's not overly spicy, it's just so. I'm a fan, I really like this one. I would wear it in springtime evenings. So, moving on. So I want to get this one because it's jumping out at me. This is called Live Colourfully and it's by Kate Spade. Kate Spade aren't really known for their fragrances. I work next door to one. They're more about handbags and shoes and clothes. So I don't know what I would expect from a Kate Spade fragrance. Kate Spade in Kate Spade, New York invites you. This is gold font on bright orange paper. That is not the easiest thing to read. Just saying. Kate Spade invites you to live colourfully, to enchant the world around you, while the fragrance's notes shift from delightful water lilies to citrus to a gently seductive musk, like light dancing on a prism. I love the bullcrap that perfume is trying to give you sometimes. The spectrum of possibilities become tantalisingly endless. I feel like I'm going dizzy reading this. Live colourfully, dance colourfully, dream colourfully. I like the message. All right, let's see what this is. I expect it's gonna maybe feel... I can smell tuberose immediately. This is white floral. It's a little bit aquatic again. Why does this smell like it's got that weird glue thing in it like the other one had from the Teresa Helbig? I don't know. Oh, we have drilling now. Yay! Okay, hopefully I've managed to block out some of it because I don't know what those guys are doing, but it sounds like they're building Noah's Ark out there. Anyway, so this is, um, yeah, like I said, I can feel tuberose. There's greenery. There's a watery greenery here as well. And it's relatively simple, this one. I wouldn't say it's super fun, but I love tuberose, so I'm going to feel positive when I smell it. It feels like a kind of multitude of white flowers that's kept very simple, if that makes any sense. That's kind of opposite, isn't it? A multitude of flowers that's simple, but I can smell more than two or three white florals here. But it's kept simple. But two bros is the main star, and it's a kind of watery green one. So, let's move on! Um, okay, this one is Love Kills. I will be gifting this to the person I was mentioning before. This is the brand, well, it's the, one of the newest ones to come from Mask Milano. They sent me this with a bottle of Tango following my spotlight video that I did on them, which was really generous. Uh, they released two new fragrances, so... Love Kills, I believe, is there is a rose. The other one's a Shepra, and I've, I have smelled this one briefly. This is... This feels a little bit like, um, it's, it's definitely rosy. It's a light, airy type rose here, powdery. And I can feel, it feels like black currant maybe. Black currant leaf and roses. So the black currant leaf always gives to me something that feels like a kind of enchanted forest type feeling. It's a little bit fantasy in my brain. I've always thought that when I've smelled black currant leaf or foresty black currant notes. It's like witch in a, in a cottage mixing berries in a potion kind of smell. And this is nice. It's a fruity rose, basically, with black currant. That's what I can smell. I'll look it up and make sure I'm not going crazy, but I like to validate myself to make sure I kind of know what I'm talking about. Okay, they don't mention black currant, but there's carnation no, geranium, two types of rose, clove. God, is it a spicy floral type of day? That's the third thing with cloves, I think. Uh, patchouli, musk, cedarwood, and amberome. I'm guessing that's some kind of amber 
replicating molecule rather than putting the actual cord in. But I definitely feel something black currency here and a tiny touch bit, maybe caramel like. But that one's quite simple, but it's in Mask Milano style, very elegantly done. So let's move on again. So this perfume is by Hiram Green. I've been intrigued about this brand for a long time. My boss actually picked these up for me when she went to uh, Exxon's festival in Milan. I really want to smell their Slow Dive one, because that's the one that everyone talks about. It's the honey one. Or well, there's one called Moon Bloom, I think. But this one's called Hide, so I think it might be one of the new ones. It's really dark. Look at that. Oh, okay. Uh, they're a natural brand. I know that for sure. So... This is, I can immediately smell birch tar here. This is smoky. This is fiery, bonfire smoke. Um, something gourmand as well. My nose is already getting tired. So, I don't like this. I don't, birch tar is, it has to be done in a certain way. And in this, I, I wouldn't want to smell like this. It's, it's possibly a rose as well. I don't, I just don't like the feel of it. I don't like the feel of the way this is put together. Birch tar is pretty much assaulting my senses right now, but I'm gonna have to look. Okay. Lemon bergamot, burned wood, cassie, which is a floral note, uh, leather, Vanilla, oak moss, so I can smell oak moss as well, that's the other kind of woody note I can feel. Uh, there's labdanum as well, which is making it feel like that sweet thing, resiny, a bit ambery. I'm not a fan of this. What's this one here? Uh, malt. There you go. I said there was something a little bit gourmand, foodie-ish about it, so... It's basically smoky, kind of ambery, labdanum, and then malt is very, very strange. I'm not a fan, so I'm gonna move on from that one. All right, the next three I was gifted by uh, Peter Kokoran, one of my lovely, I'm gonna say friends now, we talk to each other all the time on Facebook, he's part of my group. He sent me these, it's uh, Hermes, the Hermescence collection. I'm not sure that it's all of them, but this is, some of the newer stuff that Hermes have done, I believe. They might be out of date now. I mean, in terms of new things that might have come out since these. But we're gonna smell them. So these are lovely samples. I love it when a sample is a good sample, you know? You can actually wear it. These are uh, four mils. Two times four mils. Does that mean it's eight? It can't be eight mils. Anyway, this is called Agar. Ebene. Okay. Agar. Agar wood is where oud comes from. The agar wood tree is where oud comes from, I should say. Okay. This is extremely transparent. It's it's barely a fragrance. It's this is so subtle. This is um there's not, there's not much punch to this. When it's called agar, so I'm presuming it's, it's based around a woody notion, but it's, it feels like maybe two ingredients here. I can also feel rose. I think this is a rose day, guys. This is, whatever I've picked is randomly just becoming a rose day. I don't know how this just happens. I need to look this up because I, I can barely smell anything. After smelling uh, this Hiram Green one, which was very smoky, that's possibly taken away from what this would have been. Agar. Agar Aben. It's oriental woody fragrance. Uh, the nose behind it is Christine Nagel, super famous perfumer. Uh, the, the fragrance features agar wood and balsam fir. Two notes. I am on fire today. <laughs> I said it feels like two ingredients. So that's why it smells so simple. So you have a kind of coniferous feeling with agar wood, a very light oud. Agar wood is not oud. Oud is the centre of the tree that rots. Agar wood's the outside, the bark. Very simple. Moving on. 
So let's smell the next one. I wonder if they're all going to be as simple as that. So this one is called um, Cedra Sambac. Is this a two ingredient perfume? Is it going to be Cedar and Sambac Jasmine? I wonder where they've released these. I'm not sure. I don't know much about them. I don't know what their, what their thing is. Like maybe they were just trying to do a, a stripped back, you know, let's get back to basics, simple, not overly complicated thing. And yeah, it smells like cedar wood. Cedar wood is the pencil shaving y type wood. I can smell that here. And I can smell sandback jasmine. Sandback jasmine is different to French jasmine. It's more, um, it just feels a little bit more exotic. It feels a little bit more like it has incense facets to me sometimes. It's richer, it's I think a little bit dirtier sometimes. This is nice, it's nicer than the other one. But still, very simple. It's both of those materials in unison. It's cedarwood and then it's a jasmine. So, great, I guess. And the last one in the Hair Essence line, I don't know if there's more than three, but I've got three. This one is called Myrrh Elegantine. Elegantine Myrrh. Okay, I love Myrrh. I hope that this is a cool Myrrh. Even if it's simple, I would wear Myrrh on its own anyway, so. Oh, this feels like, um... oh, the rain's coming down now. Feels fruity, this one. Feels a little bit like um, myrrh. Feels a little bit like dark myrrh resin, but it feels orangey as well. It's almost like they've put myrrh with a citrus note here. Again, very light. These All three of these fragrances are super transparent. I can see right through them. I think this is not my favourite. I think the jasmine one's my favourite, but this one feels like a light resin and oranges. So I'm going to look up to see what that one is. Oh, my upstairs neighbour's now shouting at the people. Not shouting, but she's talking to them, saying, what's going on outside my window? Guys, I swear, spend a day with me. You don't get a minute's peace. It's fine. I'm just going to stay out of it and sit here with my wine and my perfume and you guys. Makes me so happy. Oh, there's lots of Hermescence ones, so I've, I'm literally scratching the surface. So, Mer Elegantine is myrrh and rose. I would never have guessed that. It smells like oranges. Anyway, let's move on. So we have another one from Hiram, Hiram Green and this one's called Luster, L-U-S-T-R-E. Let's see, another natural brand. You know that I am literally only dedicated to one natural brand in the world so far and that is Tioni Reinthal Perfumes. So, until anything can beat or match the beauty of those perfumes. Everything else is just going to have to stay by the side, I'm afraid. So, here I'm green, sorry, but Tierney Reinthal is where it's at when it comes to naturals. So, it's a rose! <laughs> I can't believe I'm smelling another rose. This feels like... Okay, I'm going to really test myself here. Because I've smelled a lot of different roses from all around the world, and... This feels like... Um, damask rose. It feels like a North African, uh, it's definitely not French, it's definitely not Bulgarian, and it's definitely not Saudi Arabian. This feels like Turkish rose because Turkish rose is, is kind of jammy and powdery at the same time. So it's some kind of damask rose, and it's pretty much all I can smell. Just rose, so I want to look it up. I think this, I think this is one of their newer ones as well. Gosh, I can't wait for the day that Fragrantica has an actual app that's just really quickly accessible. Do any of you guys use Fragrantica? Do you not agree? Okay, rose, citruses, ambergris, and immortel. Simple, elegant, rose, solid floor. That's, I said I could I literally only smell rose. It doesn't say what type of rose it is, but I'm going to pin it on a Turkish rose. Oh, it says Bulgarian. Damn! Not as good as I thought. Tail between legs. Bulgarian roses are normally a bit more metallic than this, but... Hey, if, it's, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Let's move on to the next one, because there's still a bunch. Right, so this is called By Night, and it's by Profumi Del Forte. Never heard of them. Don't know where I got this sample from. 
Possibly somebody sent me it a while back and it's something that I needed to smell. I'm smelling it now with you guys. By night, I like dark things. I like things that are called night. I like things that might be a little bit aggressive or mean smelling or just, you know. So why does it smell like vanilla? Okay. This is not that nice. I love vanilla, but this smells... It says, an escape from reality and the beginning of a dream. Here we go. Let's see what this one tries to spin us with. The unrestrained passion of sparkling and sensual notes. Vanilla orange blossom, jasmine absolute and white musk are a guide to a magnificent world. This is not good at all. This is extremely, without sounding awful, just boring as hell. That like, this is just... It smells like fake vanilla and white musk. And I don't smell even orange blossom here. So that one's going to be moved swiftly on. Profumi Del Forte. Note to self, maybe don't try any of their other fragrances. So the next two I am familiar with. Um, they just happen to be pulled out in this selection. Both of them are by Cana Barcelona, a brand that I actually really like. I really like that they are a niche brand that is approachable. None of their fragrances are too crazy or scary. They're not mega experimental, but they just use really nice ingredients. And Rose and Dragon, I have smelled a lot of times. <laughs> it's a rose, <laughs> another rose. <laughs> Gosh, I'm literally gonna go to my room after this video and spray whatever is the furthest away from a rose on my skin. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna wear a white floral or something, I don't know. So. This is quite a fun one. This is part of their black collection, which is the smaller 50ml bottles. This one is Bulgarian Rose, I believe. Uh, yeah, and Turkish Rose as well. There's honey in here. But the main distinctive, two distinctive things about this is, obviously it's super sweet, but you have a uh, strawberry in here. You have a strawberry accord, which makes it extra fruity, extra jammy. And the weird thing about it is, it is it has an animalic undertone. So when this dries, it takes you from something that's quite friendly and flirty, and you think, oh, this is a cool, fun, bubblegummy rose, and then it just whacks you with this skanky animalic. I think it's Castorium, let me just have a look. Uh, yeah, Castorium, Leather Accord, uh, Andalusian Labdanum, and Amber. So there's also frankincense in there. Uh, and saffron and cumin, but mainly it's about strawberry, rose, a little bit bubblegummy that goes into this ambery skank castorium leather. So it's fun, then it turns edgy. So I won't say much more about that one. And then the other one is Black Calamu. I have tried, my favorite from this line is Volcano. I mean, I've made no bones about that. I go on about it all the time. So Black Calamu. What is Calamu, you might ask? Calamu is, or Calamus, is related to iris root, I think. It's a root. It's actually the ugly part of the plant that's below the ground. And this one is um, black pepper, coriander, papyrus, labdanum again, osmanthus, rose, vanilla, oud, frankincense, cade, and then a lot of this Calamu essence. This one feels like a dry, almost kind of dirty, earthy leather. There's a couple of nice little things fluttering around, like the rose, but this feels rooty. It's kind of like if someone took iris or oris root, if you're familiar with that smell, and made it a bit uglier. Because oris root's beautiful smelling, it's, it's so lovely, it's so often used in many things, but this is kind of like Oris's ugly sister, and I kind of like it, it's cool. There's Oud back there, and there's Rose behind as well, but this is more about the, the earthiness and the earthy tones. Right, I just gave myself a little break, my nose a little break. I let the guys try and calm down a little bit. I'm gonna move on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left, I won't, nine left. I won't um, keep you too long, so let's just dive in again. This is by Floral Street. It's a shop in London. I don't know if it is in any other parts of the world, but I work right near this shop. They sell many things, but they do have a perfume line. 
and the ones I've smelled have been okay. This one is called Ylang Ylang Espresso. I think I know why somebody would have given me this. It's probably about the uh, Ylang Ylang search that I am still on. So, this is a very odd combination. I would never think to put Ylang Ylang, this beautiful, amazing tropical flower, with a coffee note. But they kind of blend well together in a strange way. Does it say any other things about it? Their bottles are gorgeous, I will say that about them. I've never um, shown one on camera before because I've never reviewed any of them, but it says mystical, fearless, audacious, and spirited. Spirited. But I love the way Americans say spirit. <laughs> Just makes me laugh. Anyway, and also mirror. Why don't you guys say mirror? Anyway, side note, sidetrack, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it feels a bit chocolatey. It feels like they might have used kind of a cocoa vanilla type smell to create this coffee feeling. And the ylang ylang is there too, but it's still not the ylang that I'm looking for. I wonder if this is nice on skin. I might try it on my skin actually. Let's just, let's just go for it. Coffee is a real, you have to really like the smell of coffee to want to put that on your skin, I think. Coffee's just, no, I like it less on my skin. It feels way more gourmand on skin. I can feel chocolate more than coffee. Than, so it's like, it's like a chocolate ylang ylang and that is a no from me. So, let's look at this because this one is just staring at me. This is, okay, this brand is called Tassia Canellis. And the fragrance is called Epicen. I know zero about this brand. It says here that they're from Paris. Who knows? There's nothing. There's no anecdote or funny thing to uh, let us know what, what we should be smelling and feeling when we try it. What it's gonna get, what superpowers it's gonna give us. So let's see. Let's test my nose out once again. Please do not be a rose. This is not a rose. This is a kind of smoky wood. Feels a bit gourmand. It feels a little bit sh too sharp. It feels a little bit vinegary like, like something is hitting the back of my throat too much. It's not very pretty at all. I can feel a dark, almost gourmandy wood smell. It's not something I would ever wear. This it, It's just, there's not really any redeeming features about this one. Unfortunately, sorry guys, but it's a, it, it's like burnt. There's something's burnt in it, but not in a nice way. It's not like a birch tar smoke, but whatever's in here feels like it's been put through. It's slightly too burnt. I'm really intrigued. I hope this brand is on Fragrantica. Tassia Canellis. So I'm judging Epicen, if my perfume journey in French has taught me anything, that ep like Epicen means spice in um, French. So I don't feel any citrus notes. Uh, subtle notes combined with woody notes, including leather and frankincense. That's all it says, so I don't know. I definitely get the wood. I don't get anything spicy and the leatheriness is, do you know what this reminds me of a little bit? I recently reviewed Tiziana Terenzi's fragrance called La Dono Nero and it's incense leather that's been burnt. But Tiziana Terenzi's was much better. I feel like this could always be a, kind of trying to be a dupe of that one, but never mind. So the next one is by a brand called Parfums 06. Saint Trant. Awful French pronunciation. Parfums zero, so zero. Six Saint Trant, that's like 130. Available only in fine apothecaries. Ooh, it thinks it's great. So this is called 06130. What's the perfume called? Oh, Cedra. So this is, oh, please don't be a cedar word. 
I'm having flashbacks to that brand that they just, they're just called Patchouli and they're just called Cedarwood. It's a guy, it's a man's name. I didn't like them at all. He also did the ones with the music, I can't remember. Anyway, Cedra, top notes, uh, violet, bergamot, grapefruit, mandarin, heart notes, cedarwood, nutmeg, cardamom, bottom notes, sandalwood, musk, vetiver, amber. So that sounds extremely simple and extremely usual. There's, there's nothing in there that makes me say, oh, okay. But you never know, perfumers can make magic with common and very well-known ingredients, so. Mm. Mm. It feels like a, a classic men's cologne. It feels very simple, it's, it's really nicely constructed. Kind of reminds me a tiny bit of uh, Prada Amber, the men's one, that one that comes in the purplish, bluish liquid, which I absolutely love. Reminds me of that, it's clean, it's got a soapy, almost gentlemanly barbershop feel. So, I like this one, it's nicer than I thought it was going to be, but if you like Prada Amber for men, no, no lavender, but this is very, very French. This, this feels like a classic French composition, clean, soapy, clean man that you just want to hug. I took another little break and uh, I've just realised that these gentlemen are putting up scaffolding directly outside my window. Anyway, back to the perfume. So the next one on the list is, it's not a list, next one I'm going to pick up is the other new fragrance to come from Mask Milano. It's called Kintsugi. Japanese inspired and I have tried this one on my skin and now that I realize this is in the bunch uh, This one is definitely going to be my favorite unless one of these last couple Blow me away, but this is a Shepra and it's a beautiful one This one it has been the tipping point for me where I don't really like Shepras that much Sorry, I just have a feeling that there's gonna be a man just going hello This is a really really beautiful Shepra perfume It feels a bit incense-y as well. It's not too rough. There's not too much emphasis on the oak moss, which is a big part of the, the Shepra style, or classic Shepras at least. I recently swapped a couple of perfumes with a lovely lady called Carol, and she gave me one of Molinard's fragrances, which is called Shepra Charnel, and this is in a similar style. Except this one's a lot more expensive. <laughs> so. Let me just look up what's in there uh, and then I'll tell you the notes just to kind of get a little bit more in depth with this one because it's lovely. Oh, this is so nice. Okay, so it's, it says it has leather, it says it has rose, it says it has patchouli, raspberry. Uh, what else is in here? What's this white floral here? Oh, magnolia, lime, I believe, and violet leaf. So. It's like a different take on a Shepra. Really lovely. I like the subtle fruity element to this from the raspberry. Just really nice. There's not much more I can say about that one. The greenery comes from both violet leaf and it comes from patchouli a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to move on. I love this one. I'll be keeping this one. I'll be wearing this one for sure. So the next one is by a brand called Aluminum. Aut Perfume. Okay, I know this brand. I think they recently culled their fragrance line. They discontinued loads of them. From what I remember, they are extremely simple. This one's called Indian Oud. I didn't really like the style of the ones that I did try, so I don't really have much hope for this one. But never judge a book by its cover. There's always one that can surprise you. This smells like an incense stick. It smells... I burn incense quite a lot. This feels, without sounding too harsh, like a cheap incense stick. I've bought some from India before and they've been absolutely stunning and made my house smell just wonderful. And this feels like not the best. It doesn't smell like oud at all. So I'm guessing it's an oud accord that they've made. It's their take on what oud should smell like, but 
I guess it's okay. It's it's not too bad, but it's a little bit harsh. It's a little bit, I hate to say synthetic smelling, but you know when you just, you're hit with a lot of synthetics in one go. I don't know. I Within five seconds, I'm kind of changing my mind. There's something in it that's really nice and it's not the woody part, it's something else. So this is bergamot, geranium, m cumin, uh, oak moss, sandalwood vanilla, musk and agar wood. It, it sounds like a very simple composition. I kind of like this. This is as it's getting a little bit warmer on my skin. Yeah, it still feels th synthetic and it doesn't feel like real oud at all, but there's something quite cool about it and the fact that it's got geranium in it makes me laugh because geranium to me is a rosy nuance so we're sticking with the roses guys I don't think I'm gonna get away from that today okay last couple okay it's another ex nihilo one an ex nihilo the one where I said I'd smelled the sweet morphine before the other one I really liked it was my other favorite from the from this bunch apart from uh, Mask Milano's Kintsugi this is called floral overdose Right, now we're talking, as long as it's not a rose. So, the notes are bergamot, lychee, peach, jasmine, peony, and orange blossom. Yay, no rose! And then transparent wood, moss, and musk. I like the way the other one was constructed, so I hope their style continues. Because if it does, I might want to investigate this brand a little bit deeper. Mm. It's okay. It's another clean one. The main floral that sticks out here is orange blossom. This feels like a very clean, simple, elegant orange blossom with a couple of highlights, a couple of accents around it, a little bit citrusy. I'm sure it probably develops into something nice, but it's musk, moss and wood in the base, so there's only so far it can go. But it's an orange blossom, it's a nice elegant one. I don't know how much these fragrances cost. Oh, it says, on the, in the picture it says Fleur Narcotique. Ah, oh, okay. The perfume is called Fleur Narcotique. They describe it as a floral overdose. I wouldn't say it's an overdose at all. This is stripped back, it's simple, it's wearable. It's a clean green orange blossom and that's pretty much it, so. That feels like it could be one of those Hermescence ones. All right, we have three left. <laughs> Are you still with me? This is another one by Teresa Helbig. This one's just called Teresa. So this is her namesake. This is, if she's named this perfume after herself, this is obviously going to emulate her style or what, I guess, when a perfumer names a perfume after themselves, I feel like if I did that, I would put everything that I love together, my ultimate combination. So let's see what it says. It says, she embraces every facet of her personality, effortlessly uniting contradictions. Elegant yet bohemian, coquettish and provocative. Coquettish is one of my favorite words in the English language. It's somewhere between mineral, floral, industrial again. It's got that weird industrial thing. It's nicely made, it smells good. It's got a lot of elements, I can feel a lot of different things, but I can't really pinpoint what any of them are, and I like that. I think that's a good thing when you, for someone like myself and you guys that probably smell a lot of perfumes, it's nice when you can't dissect something, because you get to just appreciate it for how it was made, rather than being able to say, I can smell that, I can smell that, I can smell that. Okay, she only has five perfumes. I like that too, I like small brands. So, it's a tobacco. Ylang Ylang, Bergamot, Mandarin, Canadian Balsam, uh, Ambrette, which is Musk Mallow, perfumers use it in place of musk, Oak Moss, and yeah, tobacco. Doesn't smell like any of those things to me. This is one of those things where you read it on paper and then you smell it and you say, hmm, not sure what happened there. It's a really tough one to describe. It doesn't smell like tobacco at all. It does smell a bit floral and it, it smells a bit sweet but it doesn't smell like ylang ylang either did it say there's amber there it's benzoin so that's where the sweet's coming from benzoin is a resin that's i liken it to a very light caramel it's in the vanilla family in terms of the way it smells that's an odd one to pinpoint but it's okay 
All right, and the last one is called Belle Epoque, and it's by a brand that I cannot pronounce. It's called, it's spelled K-N-I-Z-E. Niz, Niz? And it's one of these awful things, so I'm gonna have to put it on my skin. Let's put it here. Final one, guys, did you last the entire length of the video? Because I can talk for England. This is almost like a classic floral, and I love that sort of thing. Every time I read that something is a floral, or I hear that something's a floral, I wanna know what it smells like, because florals is so wide, you know? Any combination can create an entirely new floral. You can put 10 flowers together that smells like something that doesn't even exist, but is still floral, and I love that. Excuse me. This is a little bit golden. I've put a bigger amount on this side. Ah, oh, I like this. This is a little bit tropical. A little bit golden, a little bit green at the same time as well. What's the flower I'm smelling here? Is it like a daffodil maybe, a narcissus? Some, a flower that feels gold. I love golden floral perfumes and this has got that going on. With a tropical twist. Maybe daffodil, maybe a bit of jasmine as well. And I can smell aldehydes, which is why I, I feel like it smells a bit classic. Aldehydes instantly make things smell classic to me. If it's that particular type of Chanel number no. five aldehyde, that's why I said it smells golden because aldehydes have that golden feeling. Chanel number no. five, you get the connection. Oh, I wanna see now. So it's the final one, let's look it up. They don't list aldehydes, they list a whole bunch of stuff though. Apricot, pineapple, blackcurrant, Plum peach, tangerine, ginger, heliotrope, jasmine, magnolia, lotus, orchid, lily of the valley, mango, which is why I think it's most tropical, violet, tuberose, ylang ylang, ambergris, rosewood, sandalwood, I could go on forever, and rose, but rose isn't prominent, so that's why I said it smells vintage, it's one of those let's put so many flowery notes together and create an entirely new bouquet, and that's why I like this, because it's almost overwhelmingly floral in the best way possible. I like it. This one I feel like would need to be worn a lot to really kind of dissect it and try and get all of the nuances. I would love to spray this on myself and let it kind of swirl around. So this one's a winner and I'm going to leave it there because I've been talking for long enough. So out of the bunch, Kintsugi by Mars Milano. Winner for me, kind of modern-ish Shepra. Um, this final one I just did, the Ex Nihilo one, which was called Brompton Immortals. Really strange, kind of typical rose oud, but there's something a little bit extra about it that I really liked. Anyway, I've spoken enough, guys. I'm gonna go and enjoy the rest of my day, or probably spend the rest of it editing this video for you guys, so. Um, yeah, I'll put my tunes on and just relax. I hope you guys have had a really nice day and I'll be putting up a lot more videos soon. I'm just about to do my fragrances I obtained in 2019, which I know a lot of you guys like that video. I do it at the end of every year and let me tell you, I've added more fragrances to my collection this year than any year since I've been alive. It's gonna be a big one, so. Look out for that one, it's coming really soon. I'm Alex Romano, trying to make the world smell better, one video at a time. See you guys soon, goodbye.